so welcome back we have been discussing on the proteins the protein structure uh, we have already completed and in this presentation we'll be discussing on the properties of proteins um, when we mentioned about uh, the properties of physical and chemical properties exhibited by amino acids they do influence the uh, properties of proteins as well uh, regarding the solubility uh, proteins are uh, huge in size and hence they form colloid solution instead of true solutions in water unlike amino acids which do have a high solubility in water so it, it is mainly due to the um, huge uh, size of proteins and uh, uh, the proteins will vary in molecular weight and uh, this molecular weight is it depend upon the number of amino acid residues the shape regarding the shape the yeah uh, we can see wide variation or wide range in protein shape it may be globular as in the case of insulin uh, it may be oval in shape um, fibrous in nature or it may be elongated as in the case of fibrinogen uh, regarding isoelectric ph so we have already seen that amino acids they can exist in zwittrionic form that is uh, uh, the uh, amino acid can have both uh, negative as well as a positive pole isn't it so dipolar ionic form it can exist and uh, uh, the amino acids do have each amino acid do have a specific ph at which the particular amino acid can uh, exist in the uh, dipolar nature or the zwittrionic nature in aqueous solution and that ph is known as isoelectric ph isn't it similar goes with the proteins as well so here you can see that the nature of the amino acids determines the isoelectric ph of the proteins okay so the acidic amino acids and the basic amino acids strongly influence the um, isoelectric ph okay and at the isoelectric ph so proteins exist in zwittrionic form that is they are electrically neutral so when it is placed in an electric field as for example uh, electrophoretic uh, this one the proteins will not move towards positive or negative charge they do not migrate in the electric field okay and they show minimum solubility that means it precipitates out okay so at the isoelectric ph you can see the proteins uh, proteins uh, they start precipitation okay and uh, uh, the have least buffering capacity at the isoelectric ph so isoelectric ph of protein when it is asked you can say that it is the ph at which the uh, proteins exist in zwittrionic form having positive and negative charge, equal amount of positive and negative charge on the proteins okay first thing secondly it is at the isoelectric ph the proteins get precipitated out and it doesn't migrate in an electric field because it is having equal amount of positive and negative charges it doesn't move towards positive or negative electrode okay and it uh, maximum precipitation uh, the ability to precipitate is shown at the isoelectric pH. Uh, we can see say that each uh, protein do have isoelectric pH depending upon the nature of the amino acids. Uh, what uh, amino acid it is uh, made up of? For example, pepsin it is 1.1. It is the isoelectric pH. That means at 1.1 it precipitates out. Okay. And uh, uh, hemoglobin, it is 6.7, almost uh, towards the neutral range. So at that particular pH, it will precipitate out. Okay, it will not migrate to any of the electrode. So that is uh, regarding the isoelectric pH. Now, when uh, when we speak about the uh, proteins, we have already when we discussed about the amino acids, we already saw that there are acidic proteins and basic proteins depending upon the nature of the um, side chain, isn't it? Similarly, we can even uh, like identify acidic and basic proteins proteins which have a higher ratio of lysine and arginine obviously they are basic proteins that is when we uh, just find out the number of lysine and arginine against glutamic acid and aspartic acid we can find uh, we can uh, designate whether it is basic protein or acidic protein okay we just need to find the ratio of lysine and uh, number of lysine and arginine uh, against um, number of glu glutamic acid and aspartic acid okay if the ratio is greater than one that means more of lysine and arginine is present it is a basic protein and if it is less than one that is more of glutamic acid and aspartic acid is present that is it could be acidic protein okay so likewise we can uh, identify the acidic from the basic proteins now as already mentioned proteins they exist in colloid in colloidal form due to hydration of polar groups but proteins get uh, uh, precipitated by dehydration or neutralization of polar groups. <coughs> uh, the proteins, as already mentioned when we discussed about the isoelectric pH, it gets precipitated at the ice, around the isoelectric pH. Uh, that is, it may, uh, shows least solubility at the isoelectric pH. And certain proteins get easily precipitated when the pH is uh, uh, adjusted to 
the isoelectric pH range. Formation of curd from milk is an example of slow precipitation of milk protein uh, that is a uh, casein at the isoelectric pH. So it is actually a precipitation of the casein at isoelectric pH results in the formation uh, results in the formation of curd from milk. And this occurs due to the lactic acid produced by fermentation of bacteria uh, that actually lowers the pH. Okay, so because of the uh, lactic acid formed by the lactic acid fermentation by, uh, by the bacteria, uh, the pH it becomes acidic and at that particular pH what happens? The casein it gets precipitated because the casein, the uh, isoelectric pH is 4.6. Okay, so when it becomes 4.6, the pre precipitation starts and this precipitation is what we see during the formation of a curd. Clear? Okay. So, likewise we have a, a precipitation of a, uh, like uh, the uh, proteins by salts of heavy metals, by uh, various organic solvents, by anionic or alkaloid reagents. You can see that proteins get precipitated. Okay. Then the next one is color reactions of proteins. Okay. The proteins they give um, several colored reactions which are often used or which, which can be used to identify the uh, nature of amino acids present in them. The best example is the biuret test okay. and it is a biuret test or biuret reaction is uh, used for detection of proteins in a sample. If we have a sample and we do not know what kind of macromolecules or biological molecules are present, we can use biuret test to identify the presence of uh, detect the presence of proteins in that. Okay, we will be learning it under qualitative tests and for the detection of proteins later. Uh, the next property shown it is a denaturation. Uh, the denaturation it is a phenomenon of disorganization of native protein structure uh, uh, under the influence of various uh, agents, denaturation agents. Okay, what happens is usually the functional proteins they do have secondary tertiary or quaternary structure. And under the influence of uh, the denaturation agents, that particular uh, shape, the structure, it is lost. The secondary tertiary or quaternary structure is lost. And that particular uh, disorganization is what is referred as the um, denaturation. So, denaturation results in the loss of secondary tertiary and quaternary structure of proteins. And this uh, involves a change in the physical, chemical and biological properties of the protein molecule. As I already mentioned, the function is uh, because of the, sh the structure. If a particular polypeptide chain is uh, uh, what you call alpha helical to bring about a specific function and if the alpha helical structure is lost or it is disrupted, the function is also lost. Okay. So, uh, the uh, denaturation actually uh, results in the loss of the physical, chemical and biological properties of the protein molecule. Now, what are the agents of denaturation? What are the causes for denaturation? You can say they are, there are, we can divide it into physical and chemical factors. The physical factors include heat, uh, violent shaking. Um, then X-rays, UV radiations, etc. This can result in protein denaturation. Okay, uh, that is what happens when you uh, like uh, cook the egg and all. What happens there? It is the denaturation process. Okay, and it is by way of heat. Okay, then uh, chemical agents. It includes acids, alkalis, organic solvents, uh, salts of uh, heavy metal, then uh, urea. All these are examples for the, the reagents, um, uh, agents which can bring about denaturation of um, proteins. Now, what are the characteristics of uh, denaturation? What happens during denaturation? The first thing is native helical structure of protein is lost. Okay. So, the basic secondary structure is lost. Peptide, uh, during this process, the, uh, during denaturation process, uh, maybe some, the other bones may be broken, but peptide bones are not hydrolyzed. Okay. The rest of the bones which uh, stabilizes the structure may be broken, may be uh, disturbed, but the peptide bones which form the main axis of the uh, polypeptide chain, it is not hydrolyzed at all. It is not affected. Protein loses its biological activity because it loses the uh, secondary tertiary and quaternary structure. Then denatured denature protein, uh, it becomes insoluble in the solvent uh, in which it is, it was originally soluble. So, it actually... Uh, once a protein gets denatured, what happens is uh, the solvents in which the protein was uh, soluble, it, the denatured pro protein may not be uh, soluble in that particular solvent. Okay. It renders it insoluble in the solvent in which the protein was originally soluble. Now, the viscosity of a denatured pro protein increases while its surface tension decreases. Uh, I hope viscosity, I hope you know it. Okay. So, that is what ha that particular ch change you can even uh, see when you cook the uh, egg and all. Okay. Then, 
Denaturation is always associated with increase in uh, ionizable and sulfhydryl groups of proteins, and this is due to, due to the laws of uh, hydrogen and disulfide bonds. Hydrogen bonds and disulfide bonds are broken during denaturation process, and this results in increase uh, in uh, ionizable and sulfhydryl groups of proteins. Okay. Now, denatured protein is more easily digested. This is due to the increased exposure of peptide bond to enzymes. So, when all other enzymes are broken, what ha what will happen? The secondary uh, structure is lost. Okay. So, what happens is all the peptide bonds are directly exposed to the uh, proteases, and this can actually bring about uh, easy digestion of the denatured protein. Okay. Cooking causes protein denaturation because it is uh, heat is applied, and that therefore cooked food is getting is more easily digested. Then uh, we can see that uh, denaturation is usually irreversible. That is, once uh, uh, a protein is denatured, we cannot bring back the process. It is completely irreversible. For example, when egg is cooked or omelette is prepared, what happens? The reversal is not possible. Okay, protein. It is the protein uh, denatured during the heating of egg. It is actually albumin. So albumin is getting denatured during the uh, heating of the egg. Okay, so it cannot be reversed. Okay, this is just one example. There are plenty more. Uh, uh, then uh, denatured protein cannot be crystallized. Right. So, all these are characteristic features of uh, denaturation, right. There is yet another term or concept uh, like uh, uh, related with denaturation or uh, that is coagulation, okay. Uh, coagulation refer to like uh, uh, precipitation of protein again, but it is semi-solid viscous precipitation of protein, okay. Here uh, again, it is actually irreversible denaturation results in coagulation and coagulation is uh, optimum uh, and it requires lowest temperature at isoelectric pH. That is when the protein is at isoelectric pH, coagulation is optimum, okay. So, it gets precipitated, okay. And it requires lowest temperature for getting precipitated. So, when the protein is brought to the isoelectric pH, we can very easily bring about coagulation of proteins, okay. Albumins and uh, globulins are coagulable proteins, okay. Heat coagulation test is co used to detect the presence of albumin in urine. So, that is yet another concept, coagulation, uh, almost similar to denaturation process, okay. So, this is all about the properties of protein, fine. I hope it is clear. Thank you.